Hello. Joe. What's going on, man? Man. Good to see you. Thanks. On September 6, 2019, Neil deGrasse Tyson was invited onto Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. What was intended to be a civil conversation turned out to be a playground for Neil deGrasse Tyson's inflated ego and a blatant demonstration of his superiority complex. What you are about to watch is an analysis and breakdown of just how the superiority complex leaks through even when the transgressor makes utmost attempts to keep it concealed. Scientist, we've concluded that humans are catastrophically warming the earth response that conflicts with what i want to be true so it must be false well it's, that is the cherry picking of science it is the cherry picking of science but the, the global warming thing is very much connected to uh, a certain type of ideology a certain type of person who thinks of the, themselves it doesn't matter a, to me no nonsense it a person who thinks of the, themselves it doesn't matter a, to me no nonsense this is the first time in the interview that we see just where neil degrasse tyson believes he stands with joe when joe rogan questions him for the first time in the interview we see neil say it doesn't matter to me while looking upwards to the left by looking up to the left while saying it doesn't matter to me he's effectively telling joe what you think is less important than what i think we often see this gesture in young spoiled children who don't get what they want or people who have newfounded power and often pull the do this because i said so card. This is a very confrontational way to deal with things, and we see the confrontational tension in the rigid movements in Neil's head and neck while making this statement. A person thinks of the, themselves. It doesn't matter to me. No nonsense person. What I'm saying. Right? What, what? Yes, it does matter. What I'm. What I'm trying to say is, that is a demographic that has cherry picked science to deny human caused global warming. Person, what I'm saying, right? what, what, yes, it does matter. What raises the red flag is how drastically different his emotions are and how fast he tries to cover himself up after letting his true self show. It seems that Neil deGrasse Tyson is putting on an image to hide his ego and for a split second, he revealed to us something drastically different than what he was portraying before. We then see him immediately correct himself and say, yes, it does matter, which shows that he has his persona back on, but unfortunately for him, he let his true self show for a split second and now we know that he is putting on an image. So why does Neil deGrasse Tyson's eye movements reveal his inflated ego and superiority complex? When we look upwards, although the movement is so small, it causes our necks to be more exposed than they were before. And when we look above and past someone, the reason it has the potential to be so disrespectful is it is effectively saying on a primal level that you are no threat to me to the point where I don't even need to protect myself from you, even if I'm not paying attention to you. With this quick movement, Neil is effectively saying, I have power over you. You shouldn't be questioning me. Another telling sign of superiority complex is how he raises his voice in an impractical manner when genuinely questioned. Remember his childish, overreactive intensity, because we will discuss this very soon. We're living in that world now, and I don't know, uh, I don't think it'll stop the progress of civilization, but it can certainly slow it down and occasionally stall it. Hold a vote with the natives and make sure everybody's fully informed. And here's a bit of information I just want to add to the information. Okay? Whenever the camera pans out, we can see both Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson usually has his hands on the table with his palms down. This is more evidence that confirms the previously discussed status of Rogan and Tyson. Having your hands down on the table when speaking is a sign of dominance because of the main purpose that if you take up more space, people subconsciously view you as higher value, confidence, and authority. This is because on a subconscious level, if you take up a lot of space and are not afraid of getting reprimanded or attacked from a more powerful person, that implies that you have the resource to protect yourself. Having your hands on the table is one thing, but having your palms facing down is often seen as an aggressive form of dominance. The more forward the palms are placed or the more space that the hands take up, the more assertive and dominant that person is trying to be. Here we see Neil deGrasse Tyson's palms down and his hands are very far forward, almost halfway across the table, which is so far forward that this is borderline confrontational. The body language of Tyson and his previous actions shows us that this is less of a conversation and has become more of a lecture. While palms down shows dominance and authority, having your palms showing and exposed shows equality and contextual submissiveness. To put it in layman's terms, having your palms down is telling someone something, while having your palms up is offering someone something. This is more seen in friendships. So why does hiding your palms show dominance and what is causing Neil deGrasse Tyson to do this? 
A study by Yerkes National Primate Research Center found that, quote, chimpanzees, after spotting the humans at the corner of their compound, came over to us with their arms outstretched and their palms turned upward. This was the chimp's way of showing that they are not a threat, and we see this often in people today in the form of subconsciously exposing their wrists and palms to show that they are no threat to others. In ancient times, open palms were used to show that no weapons were being concealed and that they were no threat. Conversely, in Tyson and Rogan's context, when you don't show that you have no weapons and you hide showing your palms, you are being assertive, aggressive, and powerful. But the problem here is that on a subconscious level, having power means that you also have the potential to cause harm, physically, emotionally, and to others' reputations. Joe Rogan notices this, and he does not like it one bit. So why does Neil's hand placement visibly distress Joe Rogan? The reason it's more confrontational and aggressive when the hands are further out is because on an instinctive level, Joe Rogan is thinking, what is he hiding from me? And why is he getting so close to me without showing me what he's got? This in turn can very potentially cause Joe's thoughts to become defensive and can cause the situation to easily turn hostile. You know what we do as astrophysicists. We study the universe. There is. If it's still not a problem that people are climbing, it's that they're leaving waste. You don't stop the climbers. You tax them at some level so that now you have cleanup crews that come up after them. Yeah, but it's there's solutions. But there's but you solutions. Know it's incredibly no, look, difficult dude, to bring dude. anything back. Good. So they're, they're, you, you're almost... you tax them. You make it worth it. But there's but solutions. You know it's incredibly no, look, difficult dude, to bring dude. anything back. Good. So they're, they're, you, you're almost... you tax them. You make it worth it. We see here that, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson gets all worked up when questioned. This is one of the key telling signs of a superiority complex and an inflated ego. A law of nature is that if we do not utilize our skills, they will naturally deplete and worsen over time. What causes Neil deGrasse Tyson to act this way is that because of his status in society, his communicational and verbal defense have not had to be utilized in such a long time that when he finally does have to use them, instead of calmly discussing the issue at hand, he has to resort to the most rudimentary tactics of quite literally trying to scare his opponent into submission, much like a child would do. When Joe Rogan questions him very calmly, Tyson resorts to raising his voice and using childish, immature responses. This time when he hears Joe Rogan's response, he raises his voice and says, So? This again shows that he is not used to people speaking back and questioning his statements. Although we can't see it fully right now, notice how stiff his arms are and his hands are still face down on the table. You understand, like, they, what, what, they have to leave the bodies up there, right? You know that. They can't I, that's bring what I heard. Back. That's yes. what I heard. A big difference between cars and human shit that's left in the side of the mountain. I think the real problem, too, is I think it's If you value busy. mountain climbing and you want to keep doing it, then you f solve the problem. This is what engineers do. Again, we see Tyson interrupt Joe Rogan, and Rogan is beginning to become visibly annoyed. You, you, who's paying for the energy? Where are you getting the energy from? It's an energy thing. Well, I would think that would be very valuable. I mean, think about how many people buy It's not valuable of water. enough yet. That's the point. Well, is it that? It's, it's, pure, it's, just, it just, it's just it's just money, a, dude. It's just money. So you have to because they don't have enough data. They don't have nearly the amount of data. Google has billions. What is do, Google giving you that Apple Maps isn't? I find it fascinating how often Neil deGrasse Tyson interrupts Joe Rogan. So why is Neil deGrasse Tyson so comfortable with interrupting Joe Rogan? It's because he doesn't even know he's doing it. Because of the context, we can tell that throughout this interview, Neil deGrasse Tyson is not interrupting Joe Rogan for the sole purpose of trying to attack him or be confrontational. Because of this, we can tell what kind of ego this guy has and also what kind of people that he surrounds himself with. Therefore, the conclusion can be drawn that Neil deGrasse Tyson only surrounds himself with sycophants, people who suck up to him and let him interrupt them at his peril. Because he often interrupts without even noticing, this means that the people he surrounds himself with must allow him to do it. Neil deGrasse Tyson quite literally feels as if he's having a regular conversation and is so used to being the big fish in the small pond that he is not even aware of the internal turmoil that he is causing Joe Rogan. Fast forward and before I play this next part, pay close attention to the level that Joe Rogan is speaking on and also pay very close attention to the level that Neil deGrasse Tyson is speaking on. That seems that seems intrusive, certainly. They're oh, that's intrusive well, only things. because it's pregnancy? It's intrusive no, it's in every way. No, because... Don't tell me it's not intrusive because, because you want to buy Nikes. Because they're sending you physical things. 
It's not just something that appears on your Google feed that you can quickly glance over. Rogan is absolutely tired of Tyson's tactic of raising his voice when disagreed with. Joe Rogan feels he cannot outright confront him, so he decides to take a different route. When he responds to Tyson, he deliberately talks slower and as calm as possible when making his point. When he does this, he is subliminally trying to tell Tyson, you are out of control and I need to deliberately slow my language in order to get a point across. Ending you physical things. It's not just something that appears on your Google feed that you can quickly glance over. What's the difference between that appears on your Google feed that you can quickly glance over? What's the difference between We then see Joe Rogan moving his tongue on the inside of his mouth in an attempt to restrain his growing anger. Neil deGrasse Tyson revealed his superiority complex in a distinct number of ways on Joe Rogan's podcast. In the end, Joe Rogan felt that it was not his place to blatantly confront Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson was not purposely trying to send attacks towards Joe Rogan. No matter how much he tried to hide it, Neil deGrasse Tyson proved through interruption, yelling when disagreed with, and childish immature intensities that he very much indeed suffers from a superiority complex. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate all of you. This is so awesome that I can make this this content and you guys enjoy it. It's it's so fun for me to do. What were your thoughts on this exhilarating interaction? My name's Glidget Ronan, and thank you so much for watching.